We go now to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She joins us from Capitol Hill. Good morning, Madam Speaker. Good morning to you and congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as our viewers can see, baby on the way here. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about that rosy assessment from the Federal Reserve Chairman because $6 trillion has already been spent to get us to this point. Uh, isn't the momentum that he's talking about uh, a reason that we don't need to spend trillions more like President Biden is asking you to figure out how to do? No, it isn't at all. In fact, if you listen very closely to what he said, we're at a place where we will begin to see. We will begin to see. Uh, and then he also cautions against a, a, a surge in the virus. If we're going to grow the economy with confidence, we've got to crush the virus. Uh, they are definitely related. So begin to see a, a, a recovery in our economy is quite different from what Mitch McConnell was saying. The economy has taken off like a rocket. No, begin to see, again, related to the... the and I, I, as I watch your report, uh, you know, it's exciting to see people thinking we're out in this or that, but crowded venues and no mask wearing and the rest uh, are not a, mm -hmm. a positive sign about how we crush the virus. So I think that we have to, again, listen to the science, the science and the governance of how we get this done. And then, of course, it will open the doors yeah. for our economy to grow. Well, on the specifics of how the president wants to see the economy grow with this two and a quarter trillion dollar package, he's asking, you have a Democratic majority, it's a slim one here, you can only really afford to lose about two Democrats. Um, what are you going to do? What concrete proposals can you offer to get Republicans on board with this jobs and infrastructure package? Well, you've heard me say again and again, public sentiment is everything. Lincoln said that. The public understands that the worst and most expensive maintenance is no maintenance. And we have to maintain our roads, our bridges, our mass transit. We have to upgrade our water systems. We have to build out our, our broadband for uh, distance learning and telemedicine and the rest of that. So we have a big responsibility. We have a big need to tune up trillions of dollars according to the American Society of Civil Engineers. Well, what you this just, laid, what you just laid out there does have Republican support. It's the rest of the package that Republicans are uh, largely uh -huh. objecting to can you trim this down to focus on just no. the portions you outlined there the roads the bridges the waterways well no because infrastructure is, it's about education about getting children healthily in school with separation sanitation ventilation it's about uh, investments in housing as well. Overwhelmingly, this bill is about infrastructure in the traditional sense of the word. We also think that infrastructure, uh, there's a need for workforce development in order to have the workforce fully participate in how we go forward, and childcare so that women can be involved in that as well. So it's physical infrastructure, it's also human infrastructure that is involved. And the figure that they use is as a ridiculous one to say that it's just a small percentage of the bill. It is overwhelmingly uh, uh, what the legislation is about and some newer versions of why, how we build the infrastructure in a way that takes building back better means we're all going down the path together. Well, as we talked about there, you have a, a slim majority. So to keep the progressives in your party happy, they are pushing you to actually make it bigger, not to slim it down. They're uh, pushing you as well on paid family and medical leave. I know you continue to say you are committed to making those things yeah. permanent, but that's not in these White House proposals. When do you well, plan no. to put those things in a bill to make those permanent? Well, the president has talked about additional legislation, our family's bill that would come next and have issues that relate to lowering the cost of prescription drugs by having uh, a negotiation for lower prices about family and medical leave being made permanent. And of course, I want to make the child tax credit permanent as well. But those when? are all a matter of conversation as we go forward. I have no doubt that we will have a great bill in the House. I hope that it will be bipartisan. I've been in Congress long enough uh, to remember when bipartisanship was uh, not unusual and that uh, 
actually building, building infrastructure has never been a partisan issue. Mm -hmm. They would only make it, they made it partisan under President Obama by shrinking the bill. Hopefully the need is so obvious now uh, that Republicans will vote for it. We'll see. I'm not, uh, I, 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 uh, the door is open, our hand is extended. Let's find out where we can find our common ground. We always have a responsibility yeah. to strive for bipartisanship. Okay, so no date on that. Let me ask about infrastructure at the Capitol. It has been three months since that January 6th siege. Uh, how much longer can you wait before putting forth the supplemental bill to do all the things you say are necessary to protect the Capitol? Well, we're, we'll put it forth when it is ready, and it's just about ready now. There was a great deal of uh, review of request of organization of uh, entities that had uh, spent money on that day, January 6th, the day of the insurrection, uh, incited by the President of the United States, who would ever suspect such a thing. And so there were costs associated then, but now costs associated with building, uh, hardening the windows, the doors, uh, the Capitol put forth by the architect of the Capitol, so, uh, security issues put forth. I had uh, Can General you do that? Honore make a re re recommendation. And, and I read that report. I mean, it was just incredible detailed and scathing, frankly. So can you really wait? I mean, are you going to no, wait until waiting. the committees finish their investigation or can you do something now? No, no, we're ready to go forward. Uh, the, uh, the different reports, that I'm talking about General Honoré's suggestions yes. about what are needed. Then there's been a report about shortcomings uh, short uh, in the um, Capitol Police that must be addressed, and that was addressed in uh, General Honoré's. No, I, I think we're right now at a good place. But you, again, we're talking about money, and we want to make sure that it is the appropriate amount, nothing less than we need, but nothing more than we need, and appropriately prioritized to, again, open up the Capitol so that it is the temple of democracy, that it is that people can come and be there with adequate protection so that they can do so safely. And uh, the Appropriations Committee had that responsibility in addition to the committees of, of jurisdiction, of the House administration, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're in a good place and we feel, uh, how can I say, we think uh, that it is the appropriate prioritizing that we're putting forward. But it's always, in legislation, it's always yeah. uh, a conversation. Uh, well, we'll stay tuned for that. The House uh, Ethics Committee has opened an investigation into Congressman uh, Matt mm -hmm. Gates, as you know, for uh, a long laundry list of allegations. Are you gonna wait for the committee report or do you think it's time for him to resign right now? Well, that's up to the Republicans to uh, take responsibility for that. We, uh, in the Congress, in the House, have Rule 23, which says that in the conduct of our duties, we are not to bring dishonor uh, to the House of Representatives. Uh, I think there's been a clear violation of that, but it's up to the uh, Ethics Committee to investigate that, and it's up to the Republican uh, leader, Mr. Okay. McCarthy, uh, to act upon that uh, behavior. Okay. Uh, the, uh, but we're hopeful about other things in the Congress rather than that. We're optimistic about what can happen to our economy if we crush the virus. Uh, what yes. the president has put forth is quite transformative for our country so that we can, as he says, help is on the way, mm -hmm. help is here. We will build back better. Speaker Pelosi, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. My pleasure.